Have you ever had a door open after you've lost all hope? This is the story of how I went from crushing depression, hopelessness, anxiety in a toxic relationship to thriving in a loving relationship and, and truly happy in my life. This is actually the story about how I became the real love alchemist. I realized the other day that in, in all my time of doing YouTube, I've never sat down and told you my story of going from bad relationships to healthy love. I've given you glimpses, but I haven't just laid it all out there. I haven't told you the, the full story. So I've got really comfy on my bed today because I'm ready to dig in. I'm ready to tell you really how I went from point A to point B. Again, that hopelessness, really at the point of not wanting to live anymore to truly, truly happy and thriving. So let's get into it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Lindsay. I'm the Real Love Alchemist, and I help you go from bad relationships to real love. And if you're interested in working with me, click on the link in the description here. So let's do some time traveling here. I want to take you back to 2015. I was 32 years old. I was living in a tiny one bedroom apartment in St. Louis, Missouri with my ex-husband and I could not remember the last time I felt happy. A year ago, I had completely blown up my life. So I was living for years with this chronic illness. It was a, a dizziness that I had. It was a really strange form of dizziness that doctors could not figure out. It felt like I was constantly moving. And so I had had that on and off from about 14 years old. It was a long time really, really difficult emotionally for me to deal with because there really were no answers. And it was consistently like living with pain on a scale of, of like one to 10. It was like living with discomfort of between a five and an eight every single day, nonstop, relentless. So very, very difficult on me. And I had been just pushing through it for years. I had, again, the doctors really had no answers for me. And so I was just told to live with it and to accept it. And so I did as best I could. And I had been working for a number of years at that point, about a year prior to that, in 2013, I'd been working for years as a speech therapist in rehabilitation facilities. And I was just so completely burnt out. I, I was really, it was really difficult to live on a day-to-day -day basis with a chronic illness, plus working full-time, plus being in that stressful job, taking care of other people while I was going through so much myself was quite difficult. And so back in 2013, or excuse me, around um, 2013, 2014, I had completely blown my life up. I said, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I was living in Baltimore at the time and I had a house, I was married, and it just felt like too much to carry. I was starting to have a spiritual awakening, which I'll be talking about that in another video, but I was just realizing that I was not happy with the life that I had created. I was so burnt out. I was so miserable at work and just living my life that I knew I had to do something completely different. So I told my husband at the time, I need a break. I've been working for so long with this illness. I'm exhausted, I'm burnt out. I just need some time to myself to just take some time off because I really hadn't done that. Like maybe I had taken a week or two off here and there when I had first gotten sick again in my, my mid to late 20s. And I was just so tired. So I said, can we please just live off your salary for a while? I just need some time to myself. I need some time to heal, I need some time to rest. And I want to figure this out. I want to figure out why I have this, this chronic illness. I want to get to like the root of it. And so he said, yeah. And we, so we sold our house in Baltimore, moved across the country to a more affordable place. My, my ex-husband got a new job and we, we moved into this, this little place. And I also quit my job to take some time off to rest. And, and, and I was so lucky that I was able to do that. I know not everyone is able to do that. But you know, we did make some sacrifices. Again, we, we sold our house that I was really liking and we moved very far away from friends and family because it was an affordable place for us to live. And so I thought <laughs> that once I had this break from 
my work, from the responsibilities, from all the day-to-day -day stuff that I had to do back then, which was like, you know, paying the bills and carrying a mortgage. I thought that I was gonna get a break. I thought it would be days of just blissful meditation and rest and self-love and coming to know myself. That is not exactly what happened. It got dark real fast because here's the thing. I, I was going through a spiritual awakening, which I really did not have much context for at the time. I just thought, oh, this is going to be great. Like spirituality, it's going to be so fun. I'm going to like do some affirmations. I'm going to have some positive thinking. I'm going to feel better. I'm going to uh, like heal myself. Everything's going to be great. <laughs> and I'm laughing because, oh my gosh, no, that's not what it was actually like. I was learning to love myself. I was healing. I was awakening but it was quite different from my expectations. So now here we are, the beginning of the story, what I was telling you. Again, I'm, I'm 32 and I'm just utterly miserable because I've been going through this spiritual awakening journey for quite a long time now. And I hadn't quite realized yet at the time that part of the reason for so much of the suffering that I was experiencing in my life was due to my relationship. I was with someone who was very emotionally unavailable, but didn't know that. I was pretty much blaming myself at that point for all of my suffering and everything that was going on. Not that I didn't have a lot of work to do myself. I certainly did, and I did contribute to that relationship dynamic, but there was another person that was also contributing that I didn't realize at the time. But through this spiritual awakening and really not having any real guidance as to what I was going through, and just struggling with so much suppressed emotion that I had not been processing throughout the years. I'd kind of just been blinders on, keep moving forward. I had taken antidepressants in the past, which can be incredibly helpful. And they were for me for a while, but they also do suppress. And so I had stopped those and all of this stuff was coming up and it was very, very uncomfortable and very painful and very scary for a long time. My life really consisted at that point of just surviving. I was super dizzy, really was not finding healing from that, even though that was what I was desperately looking for in that time off, those years that I took to myself to, to rest and heal. It was really like what they call a true dark night of the soul, where I was just so lost. And I was using a lot of new age stuff to try to heal myself and getting even more confused there. I, I talk a lot about that in other videos about my experiences with trying to use affirmations to feel better and trying to do certain specific new age things that honestly just, just made me feel worse and, and I ended up feeling more shame and more judgmental of myself than before I started with those things. So at that point around 2015, like I said, it was just like surviving. I, I was so anxious all the time and so really I couldn't do much. I was so dizzy and uncomfortable all the time that I would just sit on my green couch that I had back then and I would just watch Netflix or take cold showers to try to calm my nervous system down or try all these kinds of crazy treatments to try to heal the dizziness. Like I did do EMDR, didn't really find that very helpful. Did lots of different kinds of energy healing, different kinds of spiritual healings past life regressions, um, gosh, like I was even doing like coffee enemas. I had been doing Lyme disease treatment for years before. Like if there was something in the alternative world medically at the time, like I had tried it. I had tried so many things and I was still miserable. And at that point, when you've tried all of the things or at least all the things that you know of, and you're still suffering so intensely and you're still so miserable, that's when the hopelessness kicks in. And I was there for a long, long time. I had even talked to the medical medium. This was before he, he got really big. I finally got a hold of him after a while. And he told me some things and gave me a diet to try and didn't really help that much. But there was something that he connected me to. He, he told me about this other practitioner that could help me who was also medical intuitive, but she did this other energy healing technique that I had not heard of before, and it was called the emotion code. And I did a session with her. She released a bunch of emotions on me. I really didn't feel much from, from that session with this person 
because I later found out it really very much depends on who the person is that's doing the work on you. But I was intrigued because this wasn't anything that I had tried before. It was a method that I could pick up a book and learn about and learn how to do myself. And, and so I did, I, I picked up the ebook. It was like, I forgot what it's called. I think it's just the emotion code ebook. And I started to learn how to do this technique. And I started to practice muscle testing on myself. And very beginning, one day I had found an inherited energy and it was sadness and it was from my grandmother. And so I took my magnet, which is what you do with this method, the emotion code. It was a suppressed, I should explain this, it was a suppressed emotional energy that was inherited from my grandmother. So a suppressed emotion is an emotional energy that becomes trapped in your body. So for whatever reason, you weren't able to fully process it at the time. And when it comes to inherited emotions, these are emotions that one of your ancestors experienced. And the emotional experience was so intense your ancestor wasn't able to process it at that time. So it stays energetically in their system and it can become passed on to future generations. So that's what I was carrying around. I was carrying around this inherited trapped emotion of sadness from my grandmother. And so I got my magnet and I ran it down the front of my body a couple times because that's what the emotion code book said to do to release an energy. And once I did that, I had like, the biggest shift that I had felt thus far in my life from anything I've ever done. For the first time in literally years, I felt peace. I felt not even just peace, I felt happiness, I felt joy. I could not remember the last time I felt that way. I felt like I had dropped 20 pounds of energetic weight in one second and I was like, I have found the greatest thing ever. I was just, just beyond excited. I knew I had found this key to my healing that was going to be life-changing for me. So I was so excited that I found this super easy way to release all of the stuff that I knew was there. Like I knew I was carrying around so much stuff, but I just didn't know how to release it, let go of it, move through it, process it. So I, did as much as I could on my own and I pretty quickly realized that you can only get so far when you do this kind of work on yourself because you're not super objective when it comes to yourself. There's a lot of blind spots you have. It's hard to muscle test on yourself. And so I found someone who had a lot of experience with these modalities. He did the emotion code. He did another similar method, the body code, and he also was able to release negative beliefs. So I worked with this practitioner almost every week, sometimes every week for a couple of months. And in that like 12 week, couple month period, I went from, again, that, that miserable place before I started to being a completely different person at the end of that experience. And actually it, it, it took me from spiritual awakening, from the awakening process to awakened, to the experience of enlightenment. And I actually have a memoir out where I'm talking about that whole journey of going, basically it's a, it's a memoir of my whole life. It's a journey from very early in my childhood all the way up until that moment where I'm releasing all of this baggage and I have that enlightenment experience. So I'm gonna leave the link to that in the description here. It's brand new, you guys can get it for free. Download it with the link in the description. And I'll, I'll probably make another video on that whole spiritual awakening experience because that's a, that's a, a whole other story for a different time, but it's part of my, my real love alchemist journey here. And so I had this huge, big awakening, completely life-changing experience after working with this practitioner. And then I stopped. <laughs> I stopped because I really thought that I didn't need it anymore. I was feeling so much better. I still was dizzy, right? That was the thing that I was really looking to heal by accident, I got to a spiritual awakening and enlightenment, but I was, the dizziness was much better. And I thought, well, you know what? I don't really need this anymore. And through that whole process, I did realize that the marriage that I was in was, was not going to work. I realized that my partner wasn't interested in the kind of relationship that I wanted, really wasn't willing to make the changes that were necessary for us to be in like a healthy, loving, conscious relationship. 
And so I left, I got separated and I very quickly got into an abusive relationship with a spiritual teacher. So it was not long after my divorce, really did not do any sort of reflection. I was in this really blissful period that came post awakening where uh, I hate to say it, but I had a bit of a spiritual ego, kind of thought like I had it all figured out, you know, everything was just gonna go great for me, which is kind of like the, the stuff that you hear when you tap into that new age community. Like once you awaken, like that's the answer to everything. You'll have like all this money and you'll just have everything you want, all this love, career will just easily happen. That was not my experience. And so, yeah, I wasn't really doing much of any personal development at that time. And I found myself in this relationship with this very narcissistic person. Did not know what narcissism was at the time. I was, I was quite naive at that point. I hadn't learned much about relationships and how to have healthy love. So got into that relationship. It was very short, but it was very abusive in that time. And so by the time I got out of that abusive relationship, my divorce was getting finalized. It felt like I was going through a double breakup. So it was another super intense emotional experience. Although I will say a bit better than before because I did have that awareness of who I truly was. Like that's what awakening does for you. It breaks you out of the experience of perceiving yourself to be just a mind, right? So I had that, so that did help me but it was still a really, really painful experience to go through. It was still tremendously painful. And it was another like really rock bottom moment for me because I realized like, yeah, I had this big awakening experience, but I still had no idea how I got to that place where I got into that abusive relationship after, after awakening and after divorce. And so I said, you know what? I, I have got to figure this out. I've got to figure out how I got here, how I got into this relationship, another bad relationship, another toxic relationship. And I've got to figure out how to break the cycle, how to find a real healthy love. Cause I was not giving up. Like I'm, if, I'm very determined. <laughs> and once I, once I set my mind to something, I'm going to figure it out. And I knew, I knew it was possible to have real healthy love, but I did not know how to get there. And so I spent a lot of time figuring that out. I read a ton of books. I got into therapy. Again, I talked to mentors. I studied with a true, genuine, enlightened spiritual teacher to learn about awakened relationship dynamics, conscious relationships. And I went back to the energy healing that had worked so well for me before. The, the emotion code, the body code, working with beliefs. And I started to do that on myself again. Again, worked with other people and that helped me tremendously to shift some of the relationship patterns that I had from my past. So I was feeling better. I was really figuring out how I could have real healthy love. And, and prior to that, like around the time of my divorce and, and going through that abusive relationship, I had started an energy healing business. So I had officially started doing the, the, the emotion code, the body code professionally, and I was getting a business going and I was working with clients and I was getting a lot of clients that came to me with similar issues, like going through a breakup, trying to get over someone, trying to figure out why they weren't getting the healthy relationships that they were looking for. And so I'm taking my magnet and I'm releasing stuff on them. I'm releasing, you know, trapped emotions. I'm releasing cords with exes. I'm releasing negative beliefs. I can do that now. I wasn't able to do that then. I could do it a little bit then, but I now have a whole new system to use to do that called the belief code. But back then I was doing it a little bit here and there and I was seeing that just like me, my clients were feeling so much better about their breakups. They were able to go on to have healthy, loving relationships where they couldn't before because we were releasing some of the deeper subconscious blocks that were making it hard for them to find the healthy love. A lot of times we have things like heart walls, which are suppressed emotional energies that form an energetic wall around the heart, which makes it difficult to feel connected to people. It makes it difficult for people to connect to us. And so I was releasing a lot of things like that and my clients were doing so much better. And then I said, okay, this is like a thing, like this, this specific energy healing, these modalities can be so helpful for breaking the cycle of toxic relationships. So 
I was super interested in relationships to begin with. Like once I started to learn about the dynamics and why we get into these bad relationships, I became so passionate about it. And so I decided to focus specifically on, on helping clients find real healthy love after bad relationships. So after a while of working with these clients who were coming to me trying to break the cycle of bad relationships and find real love, I kept getting similar feedback. My clients kept saying to me, Lindsay, I don't know how you do what you do, but it feels like magic. Like whatever you're doing, it just feels like such a breakthrough. It, again, it feels like magic. And so I thought, oh, <laughs> I should call myself something magical. I should call myself uh, the real love alchemist because that's what I'm doing. I'm using energy healing, using subconscious modalities to help you open up and find real love. And so that that's how I became the real love alchemist. And that's that is my story of bad relationships to healthy love in a nutshell. Oh, wait, I didn't tell you the ending. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> so I'm working on myself. I'm releasing the energies and I'm taking a good long while off of dating. So it was about a year and a half of me just purely focusing on myself and again, learning like what a healthy relationship even looked like. I didn't even know because I hadn't experienced it before. So I had to figure out what it looked like, how to date to find real healthy love, because it's different. It's definitely different than just getting into any old relationship. And I'm working with this spiritual teacher, this genuine spiritual teacher. He's got his own forum, Artem. His name is Artem. I had him here on the, the, the channel before. And I met this person who was on the forum with, with Artem learning about spiritual awakening and relationships. And we started talking and like, I, I made another video about how the, the two, like my partner and I met and you can watch that video. I'll link that at the end in the description here to, to learn more about how we met. I won't go too deep into it, but we met on that forum. We eventually started talking and we, long story short, are now in a healthy, loving relationship. And I do credit a lot of the reason for that with the subconscious work that I did. For sure the conscious work, like learning what healthy love was, learning how to communicate in a healthy way, learning how to date, that was tremendously helpful, but also all that subconscious work I did. Because I was carrying around a lot of stuff that was making it harder for me to be open to healthy love. I had so much baggage from my past, I had so many negative beliefs about myself, like that I wasn't lovable, that I wasn't enough, that people are always going to leave me. I also had resistances to commitment. I had a bunch of those heart walls that I was telling you about. So once I released all that, it was way easier for me to let this person in and really feel attraction to this person who was way, way better and healthier for me than anyone I had dated in the past. So yeah, that's, that's my story. And like I said, if you're interested in hearing about my spiritual awakening story, that I will probably do another video about. Let me know if you want to hear more about it in the comments. And you can also download my memoir. So that is in the link in the description here. And if you resonate with my story and you're like, oh, I know I have these blocks. I know I've got something subconscious going on that's making it hard for me to find the relationship I'm looking for, then I would love to help you. Click on the link in the description. All, all the stuff to reach me is there. And I'll be happy to talk to you in a free consultation to see how I can help. So thanks for watching my story. Again, if you wanna learn more about how my partner and I met and our relationship story, then check out this video here.